I think that it's important for the history of these types of change agents to be recognized for what they are, change in society, change in how we live, change in how we see each other, a, a change in uh, the University of Virginia, quite frankly. Stan Land, John Rainey, Harrison Davis, and myself were the first uh, African-American scholarship athletes at the University of Virginia back in 1970. History contains variations on just a few themes. The truly significant ones continue to echo. 50 years ago, a group of four student athletes stepped onto the grounds of the University of Virginia and in the process became Cavalier Trailblazers. Set against the backdrop of sweeping social change that included the Civil Rights Movement, Vietnam War protests, and the first class of undergraduate women, the arrival of the first African-American scholarship athletes might have seemed like a natural progression. It was anything but. UVA was the last school in the Atlantic Coast Conference to integrate its athletic programs. Even the city of Charlottesville had been slow to change, only integrating its public schools following a federal mandate four years after Brown versus the Board of Education. But there was more to Charlottesville and the University of Virginia than a history of segregation. They were both communities that ultimately appealed to the hometown Lane High School football star, Kent Merritt, and his three future teammates. We had distinct black communities in several parts of town. Oh, the old saying that a community raises a child, it existed. It was a very, um, very nice place to grow up, even though we didn't probably know at the time. I didn't know anything about Charlottesville. Charlottesville seemed like a big metropolis to my hometown in Tazewell. So many street lights. <laughs> I grew up in a very small town, Fairfield, Virginia. If you blink, you will quickly be in and through Fairfield. I wanted to go to school, and initially I wanted to go to play football. And so consequently, I figured I could play football anywhere. Actually, University of Virginia turned out to be more of an academic school, which was very appealing to my parents. Oh, yeah, I always listen to my <laughs> Kent had not even uh, uh, signed on at Virginia, <laughs> but he was like their assistant recruiter. <laughs> when they came, Harrison, John, and Stan came, I mean, we just kind of just hung out and, um, and had a great time. And I think that uh, played more of a part uh, in them coming here than anything else. Uh, so I was, I was the last one actually to sign here. We all came from winning traditions, and we thought we could help UVA win. We didn't come in to change things. We came in to play ball. <laughs> we came in to win ball games, and we came in to get an education. A familiar face in Virginia football history was charged with welcoming the new class of freshmen to grounds. Al Groh was just a few years removed from his UVA career when he took the reins of the Virginia freshman team and a host of challenges that it brought. In order to coach every player, you eventually have to win their trust and you can't win their trust if you don't know anything about them. They had certain things in common, obviously the most obviously one being um, their race, but they came from four different sets of circumstances. So each one of them was unique in his own way. But within the locker room with the goal of all being focused on the same objective, having the same purpose, going through the same things, it exposes all of us for exactly who we are. And what we always find out is there's a lot more that we have in common than what we have in difference. The very first time that I met Coach Grow, we were picking out jersey numbers that evening. And he walked by and someone said to him, Coach, do you see anybody, any of these um, young men that you know you think are gonna be good players for you? And he didn't miss a beat. He, he looked at me and he said, that guy right there, he's going to be a good player for us. I can already tell. And so, you know, it's like the commercial, he had me at hello. One of my favorite people. I mean, he was tough, you know. I mean, I'm loud. He was loud. That's how I learned to play sports. And I always played that way. No holes barred, crush, kill, destroy. Run through brick walls to succeed. 
He was hard on us, he was tough on us, but I think he loved us too. That was more like our lifeline that first year. They were my guys and it was in both of our best interests that things work out well for you. Of course, I wasn't out in the community. I wasn't walking every step with these four guys. So I understood that there are things that they're going through that are not common to the usual freshman experience. We came up, you know, in a period of resistance. It wasn't that in your face type of racism that I saw, but I did see it in the background. Fans waving the Confederate flag in the stadium. Uh, there was the playing of Dixie during the games. The change wasn't that fast, I don't think. I think it took a few years later for, for some changes to come about and accepting uh, integration totally. Face to face, I had a positive experience. As long as you're winning, everything is great. And so I understand that, I believe in it sincerely. So consequently, when they did give me a negative response because of my bad play or bad attitude, you know, I understood it thoroughly. Just as it is now, people really want to win against Virginia Tech. Harrison was having a tough time. He threw two interceptions right off the bat. And, uh, and the crowd really wasn't pleased with Harrison. And the Rebel flag was going. You know, Dixie was playing. Then all the boos came out, boo, boo, boo. And Harrison just turned around and gave him the middle finger. <laughs> they had a picture of that, man, and I told myself if I ever had a picture of that, I'd make it a mural on my wall. <laughs> Fortunately enough, we did come back, and we ended up uh, winning that ball game in the fourth quarter. The desire to succeed kind of overrode any negative responses I, I would ever get to make sure that, you know, I kept my mind on what I was doing regardless of what anybody else was saying. Even though, like I said, they were small or undersized people, we were able to, you know, compete in a lot of situations, but I think we could have done better. We were able, you know, to come in and add some positive strokes to the football program itself. Ultimately, the on-field victories never materialized for Virginia and that promising 1970 class. But their contributions extend far beyond the pages of a media guide. The program would go on to hire legendary head coach George Welch, play in 21 bowl games, enjoy the type of conference and national success unimaginable five decades ago. The identity of Virginia football today, its people, its fans, its foundation can be traced through its history, a direct line to Harrison Davis, Stan Land, Kent Merritt, and John Rainey. I wish that while we were there, we could have done more. But the reality is that we were doing something. We were proving to all that would care to look that we were capable of doing the academic work, and performing on the football field and being successful at graduating from the University of Virginia. And if those four kids could do it, then the next four or five kids could do it and the next 10 could do it. As a uh, African-American male, I think we are conditioned to always expect that there are gonna be some obstacles for us that we have to overcome. A lot of people didn't want us here, but we prevailed. It's possible to to achieve, you know, under such adverse conditions. It just proved that from all walks of life, we could be successful. So I think that's the example that we set, and I hope it was an example that people followed. Knowing where you came from, knowing how you got there, I think it adds some appreciation to your life. The first ones to do anything, you know, took some, you know, took some punches for you. Nobody ever really does anything on their own because you benefit from anybody who has gone before you and I think it's very special to know the story. I mean you couldn't get any better. You went to school together, you played sports together. That's the ultimate link in anybody's life. It's hard to believe that 50 years has passed just like that.